times turning all around times I'm gonna praise the Lord Dark times, bright times, nothing going right times I'm gonna praise the Lord I believe he knows the things I need And he's in control I was made to give him all the praise Cause he is the Lord Up times, down times, turning all around times I'm gonna praise the Lord Dark times, bright times, nothing going right times I'm gonna praise the Lord I believe he knows the things I need And he's in control I was made to give him all the praise Cause he is the Lord Welcome to Ignite Online. It's great to see you this morning. We hope you've had a wonderful week and you're looking forward to another session with us here at Ignite Online. We've got another story for you from our series called The Lockdown Bible this week. What's our story this week then, Pete? I tell you what, instead of me just telling you, should we play a guessing game? Okay, that sounds fun. Okay, I've got a few items that I'm going to show you and for each one will be a clue towards what our story is this week. Okay. You need to look at them and then after each one, try and take a guess about which character or which story you might be looking at. Okay, I'm ready. Are you okay with that? Tell you what, why don't you try and play along and see if you can guess what the story is before Ali manages to. Okay. Okay, first item. I've got the moon and some stars. What story from the Bible could we be talking about if I've got the moon and some stars as a prop? I think that could be the story of creation, when God created the moon and the stars. That's a really good guess. That is a story in the Bible which has moons and stars in it. Unfortunately, it's not the right answer. Okay. So I'll give you another clue. What about, maybe you can hear it coming, these chains. I've got some chains with a great big silver padlock. And remember, we've got a moon and some stars. What story from the Bible might we be talking about? Well, there are a lot of people who end up in prison in the Bible. And Paul and Silas ended up in prison in the night time. That could be the moon and the stars. That's a good guess. I like your thinking. and That's both of the clues. It's still not quite the right answer. And if you remember, we did Paul and Silas last week. Oh, so we did. OK, this one's going to take me a second. Just bear with me. OK. Mm, oh, sorry, got a bit of hair in my mouth. There you go. Oh, wow, that is lovely, Pete. It's great. Do you like the little gold tassels? I think they're very cute. Lovely. Um, so that wig makes me think of Egyptians. That's a good. That's a good so guess. So it could be Moses who led the Israelites out of Egypt. Hmm, Moses leaving the. I suppose they were slaves, they so that could slaves, be the chains. Yeah. Unfortunately, still not the right answer. Right. You're really good at guessing Bible stories and characters, Ali, but not coming up with the right answer. Oh. Have you got it yet at home? Let's find out. Okay, I've got one more clue for you, Ali. This one should be a dead giveaway. Let's I'm see ready. what you can get. Wow. There we go. That's amazing. It's, and it's technicolored it as is. well as amazing, isn't it? Is. it? Is. Do you like my amazing technicolored coat? I, I do, and I think this is enough of a clue. For it's me. a very big clue. Have you guessed at home what it is yet? What do you think, Ali? So I think this must be the story of Joseph. It is. It's the story of Joseph. Our lockdown Bible story this week is the story of Joseph and how God was with him, even though life didn't turn out quite the way he thought it was going to. Take a look at this story and see what you think. Jacob had 12 sons. That's right, 12. His favourite son was Joseph. Jacob spoiled him and gave him special gifts, like a beautiful coat decorated with many colours. Reds and greens, blues and yellows, 
purples and pinks. Joseph was bright as a rainbow and proud as a peacock. Joseph's older brothers did not like this one bit, but what they hated even more were Joseph's dreams. I had a dream last night, boasted Joseph. Oh no, groaned his brothers. I dreamed that we were all bundles of wheat and guess what happened? Your bundles of wheat bowed down and worshipped mine. And I had another dream, Joseph bragged. Go on, his brothers sighed. I dreamed we were all stars and guess what? Your stars bowed down to mine, just as if I were your king. It didn't take long for Joseph's brothers to grow tired of this, but that's no excuse for what they did. The next time they were out of Jacob's sight, they grabbed Joseph, tore off his colourful coat and dropped him down a dry well. They were just about to kill him, in fact, when they spotted a cloud of dust at the edge of the hill. It was a band of traders bound for Egypt, their camels loaded with goods for sale. Why should we kill Joseph? asked one of the brothers, when we can sell him to these traders and make some money for ourselves. He'll be sold as a slave in Egypt and his foolish dreams will never come true. Twenty pieces of silver. That's how much the traders gave them for Joseph. And when the traders had gone, the brothers ripped up Joseph's coat, dipped it in the blood of a goat and carried it home to their father. Joseph is dead, they told Jacob, and they showed him Joseph's coat, its long sleeves shredded, its beautiful colours smeared with blood. Jacob wept and wept, and Joseph wept too, as the traders carried him far from home. When the traders took Joseph to Egypt, they sold him to one of the king's own soldiers, a man named Potiphar. He was kind, and Joseph worked very hard for him. So hard, in fact, that Potiphar put Joseph in charge of all the other slaves. Potiphar's wife, however, was evil and cruel. She told lies about Joseph and had him thrown in prison. Things looked bad for Joseph. It seemed as if his dreams would never come true, but God was watching over him. One morning, one of the other prisoners said, I had a dream last night, a strange dream. I dreamed I saw a grapevine with three branches. Suddenly, bunches of grapes burst out of those branches. So I squeezed them into a cup and gave it to the king to drink. I wonder what it means. Joseph listened to the dream. God listened too. Then he whispered the dream's meaning into Joseph's ear. I know what it means, said Joseph. Before you were sent to prison, you served wine to the king. Well, in three days, you will be set free and serve him wine once more. That's exactly what happened. And when the wine server was set free, he promised to help Joseph get out too. Two long years went by. Then one morning, the king of Egypt said, I had a dream last night, a strange dream, and I can't work out what it means. A dream, said his wine server. I know a man who can tell you all about your dreams. And straight away, Joseph was brought from the prison. I was standing on the banks of the river, the king told Joseph, when I saw seven fat cows walk out of the water. They were chewing happily on the grass when seven other cows joined them. These cows were bony and thin, and instead of eating the grass, they ate the first seven cows, but they stayed as skinny as ever. What can it mean? God whispered in Joseph's ear. Joseph listened, then he bowed and said, Your Majesty, for the next seven years, Egypt will grow many good crops and be as fat as those first cows. But after that, for another seven years, hardly any food will grow at all. So unless you want your people to look like those skinny cows, you must store up food in the good years and use it wisely later. The king was so impressed with Joseph's answer that he not only let him stay out of prison, he put him in charge of storing and saving and serving out Egypt's food. Seven good years were followed by seven bad. And after the king, Joseph became the most important man in Egypt. It was like a dream come true. But you might have heard that story before. It's a really familiar one. But it also sounds a bit like our own story, doesn't it? Sometimes life is really good and it's going the way that you think it should or you want it to. And sometimes life isn't so good and we end up facing situations which are difficult or hard. Do you know what? Just like with Joseph, God is with us through all of these. He never leaves us and never forsakes us, which means he never leaves us alone and he's always there for us. God promises to journey through this life with us, just like we learnt from Adam in our first session that it's not good for man to be alone. It's not just other humans that we need. It's God with us each and every day. 
and he promises that he will always be there. This story of Joseph shows that to us. When times for Joseph got hard and he found himself in prison, God still was with him. He still blessed him, he still loved him, and he was still there looking after him. What's also really important is to look at what Joseph did when times got hard. Because when life is going well, it's easy to follow God, to live life his way and to do things his way. When life's a bit more difficult and things aren't going your way, maybe it's harder to live life God's way, to continue loving and being kind and showing grace and working hard and doing all the things that God asks us to do as part of his family. But when life gets hard, sometimes do we stop talking to or listening to him or praising and worshipping him? How we respond when the world is difficult really matters. But just like with Joseph, even when the world isn't going the way we want it to and life doesn't seem fair, because God's with us, we can do well. We can see the bad things that are happening in our lives, the things that are difficult, turn into good things. Because that's what God does. God turns bad into good. He turns wrong into right. He shows love and grace and kindness and blessing in every situation. And if we follow him and stay true to him, he will always be there for us. Through the mountains and oceans Through the sand and the trees I will go with your power Your spirit living in me Through the mountains and oceans Through the sand and the tree I will go with your power your spirit living in me Whoever we are, wherever we've come from Jesus is calling our names You have called me so I will follow You will lead me so I will go When I stumble and when I fall down You pick me up and you lead The mud and the thunder Through the cold winter snow Your love always surrounds me So with a smile I will go Whoever we are Wherever we come from Jesus is calling our name You have called me so I will follow You will so I will go When I stumble And when I fall down You pick me up And you lead me on Whoever we are Wherever we've come from Jesus is calling our names Whoever we are is calling our names You have called me so I will follow You will lead me so I will go When I stumble and when I fall down You pick me up and you lead me on You have called me, I will follow You will lead me I will go when I stumble, when I fall down, you pick me up and you lead me on.
For our craft and our game this week, we're going to combine the two. We thought it would be fun to do a Joseph-themed giant board game that you can play around your house with your family. Ali and I spent some time making some board game spaces with cards that you can lay out on the floor, and then when you land on those, having rolled the dice, you do what they say. Here's some of ours that you can see to give you some ideas. This one is Interpret Dreams, and if you land on it, you go forward one space. This one is thrown down a well. If you land on that space, go back one. This one is get a coat. Roll again if you land on this space. And this is our prison space. We have another space which can send you to prison, just like Joseph went to prison. And this is where you go if that happened. Why don't you have a listen or a read through the Joseph story again and think about what things you could put in your board game. Then draw them out on paper or card, colour them in, and find a dice and have a game. Here's a short video of Ali and I playing our first game. Have fun! Okay, we're going to play our board game now. Ali's going to go first, she's got the dice. Let's see how we do. Bye! <laughs> Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I get another go because you're missing a turn. Oh. Two, one, two. Blank space for me. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Go, go to, to prison. prison. Go to prison, Ali. And you have to roll a five or a six to get out. One, 
sold as a slave, go forwards too. I miss prison. Come on, five or six. Yeah, six, six, 2000. Did you get, did you roll again? Because you're out. Okay, give me a decent number. One, two, three, four. Not quite. One, two, three, yes. And he's reunited with her family and she wins. Woohoo! Your turn to have a go. Have fun. We hope you've enjoyed it night this week. We really have. We're going to finish with a prayer. If you want it to be your prayer too, just say amen after me. Father God, thank you that you do never leave us and never forsake us, that you're always there for us, showing love and care and grace and kindness and blessing. I pray, Father God, that we are able to continue to live life your way, even when it's not going the way we think it should, that we know in the good and the bad that you are always with us and we can always be with you. Amen. We'll be back next week for another lockdown Bible session. We hope to see you then. Bye-bye.